Hey guys, CB Super. Today I'm going to show you how to make dashed lines inside of DaVinci Resolve not using my dashed lines tool. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. I'm going to go ahead and grab a new fusion composition, drop it down on my timeline and jump straight over to fusion. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a polygon node and I'm just going to load this polygon node up. Now I'm just going to create a simple poly line and then I'm going to give it just a little bit of border width and then click off of solid. I'm just going to rename it dash poly. You can name it whatever you want. And then I'm going to come over to the right click here for shape animation, right click, and then I'm going to remove this polyline. And then I'm going to right click and I'm going to animate it again. Because what I need to do is I need to either click animate or publish in order to load it into the publishing system so that the paint node that we're going to use here in a second can actually find it. The next two nodes I'm going to bring in is a background and a paint node. Inside the background node, I'm going to take the alpha and I'm going to slide it all the way to zero, making it a completely transparent background. And then inside the paint node, I'm just going to come up here to the polyline stroke. And then I'm going to create two points, which also creates a polyline, just like we did over here on the dash poly. Now I'm going to come up to the brush controls because I don't really like this soft brush. And I'm going to click on the circular brush. And then I'm going to come down to stroke controls. And where it says spacing, I'm just going to slide it all the way to the right all the way to one, giving us these round spaced dots. I'm actually going to double click in here and just type in two because I want it to have a little bit more space so it's a little bit more effective when we actually connect these two. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to this right click here for shape animation. I'm going to right click. I'm going to connect to. I'm going to find that dash poly and poly line. And then once I do that, you'll notice that it's snapped to the actual mask's position, the dash poly position. Now we got one more step to do, and that is to bring this dash poly and pipe it into the mask input of the paint node. And now you see we got our dash line. So it's really easy to do. There is one downfall to it. And that is that if I was to move this using the insert and modify, let's say I move even this one point over here. And then I notice that I happen to be on frame 90. And then as I move it back, I've actually keyed that frame now at frame 90. So Let's say I move this again. Now you'll see that it will move over to the left at frame 90, and it's just going to start moving around. So sometimes using this method, you will find that it may be a little bit confusing as to why you have some kind of animation. If for whatever reason, if you have animation that you don't want, you can either come over to where that keyframe is, make sure you're still selected on the dash poly. You can right click and remove that key, and that's going to reset it. And then you can come back over to the, wherever you put the next key, you can right click remove that key. Let's say that you have a bunch of different movements all throughout here, maybe even created some new points. And then let's come over here. And for whatever reason, we have just done all kinds of different things. Then now we'll see that we got all kinds of mass crawling left and right. There is a way to get rid of all of those keyframes. And it's not by coming over here and removing the dash poly line. If you do this, you're going to break the connection between the paint and the dash poly. And then the mask will no longer connect to the paint. Now, of course, you could connect them. You got to go through the whole process again. Instead, there's an easier way. Let's come up to the spline editor and then click on the dash poly. Give ourselves a little bit more room. Because we clicked on the dash poly, only the things that animated are going to be visible inside of the spline tool. So let's go ahead and click on this zoom to fit and we'll see all of our points right there. I can go ahead and command scroll out just a little bit so I can select all of them and just hit my delete key. And there you go. All the points are now gone. So that's just a really easy way to get rid of animations. And that works if you're using the regular polyline as well. Let me go ahead and click off this spline tool. And let's say you want to turn this polyline into a rectangle. All you can do is click on the polyline, right click somewhere in the viewer, come down to the dash polyline and then over to the right where it says create and then create rectangle. You can also also create the ellipse if you want. It'll do the same thing. Height and width don't really matter because you can always change those later. And now we have created a rectangle. So if I click off the screen here, we can see a little bit that I now have a rectangle. And the neat thing about doing it this way is that you'll notice that the actual dash lines will conform to the angles, which almost any other way you do this, you're not going to be able to get that. So the reason you get that is because if we click on this dash poly and we start to pull this border width back, we'll actually see that it's just because it's a circle and it conforms really well around corners when you start to mask it out. So of course we can go ahead and do this. And the nice thing about this is you can also decrease the length and then you can animate the position to get you some animated dash line effects. So that's pretty cool. Other than that, it pretty much works just like a regular polygon mask node. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this and I have a bonus tip for you guys. It's how to create dash text 
hex. Of course, this is easy. It's not out in the open, but it is easy once you know where it's at. So let's go ahead and jump over to the shading tab, which is the fourth tab over here. And then down in the property section, you'll notice that there's an appearance section. Well, I can click on the outline. I come down to line style. You'll see that by default, it's set to solid. But if I click on that, I can also select dash and that'll automatically make dash line. And if you don't like the dash lines, you can always select the dot lines. Both of them look really good actually. And you can even change the fonts Let's go ahead and change this to maybe a different font. And now you'll notice that it will conform to the dotted line. All right, well, that's been a quick tip on how to make dashed lines and text inside of DaVinci Resolve 16. If you have any questions, leave it down in the comments. If you like this video, make sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.